That is a negotiation. It's negotiating deadlines, timelines, um, what your job is, what your job should be, who's going to work with you, what resources you have, right? Who in your household does the laundry? Who in your household's doing the grocery shopping? Who's picking up the kids? Those are all negotiations. I have two teenagers, and by 7.30 in the morning, I've negotiated more than you can imagine, <laughs> right? And usually lost like 50% of them. I often start these by saying you don't know true humility until you've been out negotiated by a 15-year-old. Um, and it happens in my household routinely. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about negotiation. Any way we can make a deal that gives us something that we could not have without this discussion, and if there's something in the way, figuring out how to move it. Right? So for women, for everybody, but particularly for women, the most important step in the negotiation is figuring out to negotiate in the first place. So here's the problem, ladies. Men negotiate four times more than we do. Do they always do it well? No. Do they always get what they want? No. But they look at more of life's circumstances as ways that can be negotiated. Again, not all men, and some women are really terrific at this, but the, the research on gender tells us that women look at the world as more fixed or absolute. This can't change, right? And men look at the world and say, oh, I bet I can change that, right? So that actually matters. I'm going to give you some examples that are funny, and then I'm going to give you some examples that are serious about the differences in negotiating. So there's a book, Ask For It, that was written by Dr. Linda Babcock, an economist at Carnegie Mellon University where I work. And Linda Babcock and I are launching the first negotiation academy for women at Carnegie Mellon University. It's something I've you know, been working on for years. I feel like I'm giving birth. That's what this, you know, that's what this feels like, this program, because it's something that I've been nurturing and working on for a very long time. And in Linda's research, Dr. Babcock's research, she's identified four really interesting reasons why women don't negotiate as often. And the thing that got her started in this research is that she has all these graduate students, right? She's a, you know, a, an economist, and she has PhD students who work with her and, on their projects. And several of the women PhD students came up to her and said, hey, listen, this school is just not fair. The men get all the teaching assistant positions, and the women don't get any of them. And these teaching, position, teaching assistant positions, number one, are paid. And we all know how much money students need all the time, right? And also, they have prestige to them. So you know, if you have on your resume, your vitae, that you were a teaching assistant, that's a nice thing to have on there. And if you are a teaching assistant, chances are it also allows you to develop a very deep relationship with the professor whose course you're teaching. And then you get something else out of it, right? You get a connection, a network connection a better letter of recommendation, you know, good things happen when you're a teaching assistant. And so Linda said, looked around and she looked at the, you know, who the teaching assistants were and she said, wow, it's really true. The men, almost all the teaching assistants are men. So she marched down the hall to talk to the dean, who was her husband. And she said, listen, Buster, why is it that there are not more women teaching assistants. And he said, anybody know? Women don't ask for them. <laughs> that men come up to him and to other professors almost when school starts and say, oh, by the way, I'm really interested in a teaching position. And please consider me for the first TA position that comes up. And the men ask for them. And you know what happens? They ask for them. and. Oh, big surprise. They get them. And the women are saying, mm, any minute now, they're going to recognize just how talented I am. 
any minute, somebody's going to come up to me and say, MJ, you are the teaching assistant of my dreams. <laughs> Just any minute now. Not going to happen, right? So Linda then did this research on all of the circumstances in life where there's a gender difference. And it's fascinating. And it's, you know, I read a lot of, I do a lot of, um, I read research. I do some research, but I read a lot of research. And I say that sometimes the research is so depressing that it makes me want to put my head in the oven, but it's only symbolic. I don't turn the gas on. <laughs> but there are some studies that I will show you that I had my head in the oven for quite some time. And some of them are Dr. Babcock. So the first thing is recognizing opportunity. Do we see the world as fixed or absolute? Are there opportunities to negotiate all day, every day that we just miss, right? Because we're just waiting to be noticed. So <coughs> the second thing is entitlement. Hey, Jono, can you give me that water? Just the bottle. Thank you. So the second thing is entitlement. And entitlement is, mm -hmm, am I really good enough? Am I as good as they are? Am, am, am I teaching assistant material? You know, uh, do I really deserve this? Hello? Right? So here's what we find happens that women have these elevated standards for themselves, right? In order for me to ask for a teaching assistant job, I have to be like so perfect. And men don't have the same standards. Now, none of us should have those standards. Men are right. Like, look, we should have some standards, right? It's not like I'm suggesting we abandon all standards. But sometimes we expect more of ourselves than is required. And that's why we don't ask, because we don't, aren't sure we deserve it. And that we have to get over, OK? That's something we got to fix, because that will get in our way. Now, do I believe you're entitled to everything, right? Should you get everything you ask for? No. No, there are things to which we're not entitled, that we haven't earned yet, for which we don't have the skills. Those aren't the circumstances I'm talking about. I'm talking about the circumstances where you have the same set of skills as your male colleagues, but you don't think you're worth as much. You don't feel the same sense of value. And that makes me want to put my head in the oven. Okay. The third step is anxiety. Oh, like anxiety about negotiating, especially when it's about money. I do an exercise with smaller groups, usually. And I have on one side of the room signs that say, I feel powerful when I negotiate. I negotiate all the time. The other side will it be impressed that I'm negotiating. And on this side of the room, I have, I don't have the power to negotiate. Negotiation is like going to the dentist. <laughs> Negotiation is something I try to avoid. So I have groups of women, whether they're 10, whether they're 100, whether they're 200. The same thing happens. It doesn't matter what age they are. It doesn't matter if they're high-level executives or high school students. I say to them, please go stand in front of the sign that best reflects how you feel when you're negotiating for someone else. When you're negotiating for someone else a colleague, a friend, a family member, anybody. And you know what happens? Everybody walks over to the positive side. Not absolutely everybody, but there's, there's a few people that go right to the negotiation. It's like going to the dentist. But most people go to the positive side. And then I say, OK, great. So look at your sign. You know, get, your, get in your mind what, what that sign says. Now please stand in front of the sign that best reflects how you feel when you're negotiating for yourself for money. And the whole room shifts, right? I mean, I have to be careful that there's not a tilt, right? Because almost all the time, with a couple of exceptions here and there, everyone walks to the negotiation is like going to the dentist. I don't have power, the power to negotiate. The other side will think I'm greedy or selfish. Right? And then I say, oh. I can't leave you standing there. 
please go stand in front of the sign that reflects how you want to feel when you're negotiating for yourself for money. And they walk back across the room to the sign that is the most powerful, one of the most powerful ones for them. And then I say, sit down, we've got some work to do.